Hi guys and welcome to my 2016 recording and render settings video. I've made one of these previously last year and that focused on 1080p and the best settings that I found for reproducing the best quality on YouTube. Um, however, this one, 1440p, 2K gaming and you can still use it with 1080p videos, you just upscale them a bit and you're still going to find that the quality is a lot better. However, I still would recommend checking out that first video if you're interested. I'll put the link on screen now if you're interested in that 1080p setup. So just for you guys before we start, what I would recommend for this video is pausing it at the sections where I show the actual settings and where I show the, you know, the information boxes with everything that you should be copying and replicating into your own system or your own you know render settings i know there are a lot of videos on the internet going through these settings probably very similar or exactly the same settings as me but people on my channel often ask me to do the videos because they know they're sub to me the videos are right there for them and it's nice and easy i'm going to do quite a few videos in the next week or so focusing on all my settings whether it's in game render settings anything like that even my audio stuff so you guys know exactly how i'm running it and if you're on youtube you know you're doing the same sort of stuff and you're struggling a little bit i know i was when i first started doing this sort of stuff um, when i first started making videos this will help you out a lot starting off with what i actually record with i use shadow play and have used shadow play for pretty much everything this is uh, exclusive obviously to nvidia cards in this case i'm running a 980 ti so i'm able to record quite comfortably in 2k so 1440p the impact of shadow play on your computer as probably you all know isn't actually that much so it's better than running some of the older you know the older ways of people were doing it with dx tori and fraps i think shadow play blows both of those clean out of the water as for my project settings this is how i have it set up at the minute 1440p is what i've called the templates for obvious reasons is going to be 1440p height with 2560 and then the rest of the stuff you can see on screen as i said before you can pause it and change it to how you you want it to look and then obviously save click apply and you can see down in the project preview window whether that's come up bear in mind that clicking at the top where it says currently it says best full you can change that actually up and down it doesn't have an impact on the output after you've read, uh, rendered the video but it will affect what you can uh, play back i'm also going to be producing a video in a couple of days that will show you how to fix all crashing on sony vegas and fix all stuttering problems with your playback took me so long to work out how to do this but i figured out how to do it and i haven't had a single crash on sony vegas since sorting this out a couple of months ago so you definitely stay tuned for that if you want to see it Okay, so you've got your project settings set up, you've got Sony Vegas open, you're ready to do some uh, editing, you drop in yourself a, a clip, and you will know how to edit stuff on Sony Vegas. If not by now, you probably should look at a few tutorials, but just a couple of things that people, I still see people forgetting to do. Always disable resample, maintain aspect ratios, you know, do that if you're using something that's not the same ratio as your, your settings. One little trick that a few people um, I think a few people were looking for. If you click this selection edit tool at the bottom or hit D twice on your keyboard, you can select more than one track. You drag across the top, you can right click, go to switches, and then you can disable resample. So you can disable resample on every single video on your track. Edit up the clip you've got. In this case, we're just going to use a six second clip from Battlefield. Add a bit of sharpen to the, the video itself. I just keep that at low, maybe 0.50 or something like that just crisps up the image just a little bit. I think it works quite well on Battlefield. I also use things like Magic Bullet Looks and all the rest of it. I wouldn't really recommend using all of that unless you're, you're really you know putting a lot of effort into your video because the render times are absolutely crazy compared to what you, you know, you're usually going to expect without this sort of plugin. So we've finished editing and we've selected, as you can see at the top now, using these little bars, we've selected the whole video eventually and the little yellow things at the top show you what you're actually going to be rendering as long as you tell that, you know, as long as you click that in the render thing. Always remember to save first before rendering just in case your computer has a meltdown and you don't want to lose everything and then click render as and these are the settings that I use. I use main concept AVC AAC MP4. I then obviously customize the template and then this is what comes up. Custom frame size 2560 by 1440 baseline 60 fps pixel aspect ratio 1 number of reference frames 2 constant bit rate of 135 million that seems quite high i know and you might want to have that a bit lower if your computer maybe doesn't render 
so fast or you don't notice the difference because some people say that you just don't need it that high but i've found the video quality is definitely better on youtube with a higher bit rate than it is without it might just be me being a bit weird but that's how i have it and my videos tend to look okay so i'll keep it like that as long as i keep these sort of settings Number of slices, 12. Render using CUDA if available. If you click on the system tab on the bottom, you can check if your computer has CUDA. It means rendering using the power of your graphics card rapidly increases the time taken to render a video. Audio, 48,000 sample, uh, sample rate and bit rate, 256,000. And then for project, I've got video rendering quality best, use project settings and default. That's all you need. Make sure you save it and then click OK. In this case, I'm going to cancel it because I've already got this saved. Then make sure at the bottom you render loop region only and then click render. As you can see, a few snapshots in the background, that's the sort of speed you're gonna to take to render a five or 10 second video. So it still is quite a lot of rendering time. However, the quality is gonna be fairly good. Again, you can do this with a 1080p video, 60 FPS, just bear in mind, it's probably not gonna be the same sort of quality as a, a natural 2K video. It would look much better using, you know, some more plugins to you know get the colors a bit crisper and stuff but it's not bad and this has gone through rendering twice and obviously been uploaded to youtube as well which destroys videos as best it can so that's it they are the settings i use i'm going to do another video soon showing my audio settings another video showing my recording settings for audio obviously and then i'm going to do a couple of other things to do with battlefield 4 itself so reticles the key bindings things like that because i know a few of you have been asking for that sort of stuff so i'll get onto that as soon as i can thanks again for watching guys if you did enjoy it leave a like leave something down in the comments if you've got maybe a better way to render a video or a better way to you know improve these settings because i'm always open to ideas and ways to improve my video if anyone asks some questions try and help them out down in the comments let's get a bit of a discussion going of the best way to get the quality reproduced onto youtube thanks for watching guys and i'll see you in the next video